Hey, what's up, Film Go family? I'm about to take you through a quick color grading tutorial in Final Cut Pro. Um, so just bear with me here. I usually color grade in DaVinci Resolve, but I actually used Final Cut Pro for several years prior to getting DaVinci Resolve. And uh, you can still produce great, great, great color grades out of here. All the systems are a little bit different, but the tools are generally the same. Uh, you just need to learn how to master your tools. Once you master your tools and learn the scopes, you can color grade in just about any system because all the principles uh, stay the same and they go from software to software. Get a plan when you're color grading and stick to that plan. Everybody's going to look a little bit different and that's okay. At the end of the day, you just want to produce a great looking image at the end product regardless of how you get there. So get a plan in place and stick to that and get used to that and then build from there. So first thing, uh, we actually shot this in a very dark alley a couple of years ago. I shot this on my GH5 in V-Log and it's 8-bit Kodak. So the Kodak was not very good. Um, the alley was dark and we used the street light as this key light. And as you can see here, so the, the key light is shining off the left side of his face and this big gray wall that was over here kind of act as a bounce to bounce some light back into his face on the shadow side of his face so um it, it kind of worked out pretty decently uh, but the color of the light was very yellowish so it put made his skin tones uh horrible looking so we need to make sh get his skin tones uh corrected so first thing we're going to do is a basic color correction I always remember you want to do a color correction before you do a color grade color grade is the color grade is the look the color correction is just getting the white balance and the proper contrast and things into the image you want to kind of bring the image to look normal all right, so first thing we're going to do is add contrast. So we want to go into Final Cut Pro and go into and add a color board. Once you add that color board, there's three tabs at the top here. Color, saturation, exposure. Go over to exposure. And here are three buttons, uh, three circles. All right, you have your shadows, your midtone or your gamma and your highlights. So let's drag down the shadows a little bit until you start to get some nice contrast and then boost up your highlights slightly slightly all right toggle that on and off starting to look good and just add enough contrast to you kind of get the look that you want as far as contrast wise again we're doing a basic color correction we're not necessarily adding the look right now we're just trying to get it to look normal all right there we go. So now we're going to click this tab again and we're going to add another color board. Now let's add some saturation to the image. Go ahead and do me a favor and boost it all the way up. We're not going to leave this image looking like this because it's very well oversaturated. We're just adding it right now just so we can see the colors and what we're dealing with uh, while we're color correcting. So now as you can see, his skin tones are very, very yellow. So we need to get that closer to natural skin tones as possible if you look over here at the vector scope you'll see uh this line right here that's the skin tone line so we need to get this yellow skin as close to it as possible it don't always have to be exactly on it uh, but we still want to get it uh close to it and that's usually a good indication that our skin tones look a little natural and if you look up here in the rgb parade you can see that there's a lot more red and green in this image than blue uh, so it's not it's not color balanced properly at all yet. We shot the white balance too warm uh, and the light was warm. So what we need to do next is come click this tab again, come down to your color wheels, add a color wheel. All right. So I'm actually going to use my temperature slider and just kind of cool off the image somewhat. While I'm doing it, I'm looking at my scopes. Uh, I'm looking at the image too, but mostly at my scopes. You see as I slide this back and forth, this blue wave here is moving and the red wave is moving, all right? Uh, and we want to get those kind of balance as possible, all right? It don't always have to be exactly balanced because just depending on the type of lights and the look of the area that you're in, it might change. But we want to get it somewhat in the general area. And when you do that, as you can see, it's it start to look a little bit more natural, all right? Now, the skin tones are still kind of yellowish and... Uh, and look a little unnatural. Uh, so what we I know what we need in this image just from looking at it is a little bit more magenta 
Uh, so we can use the tent slider here and add the magenta if we want. But what it does, it adds magenta to the entire scene. I don't generally like to use that. I like to come do it manually um, because I can be more selective with where I add the magenta to. Uh, so I know the skin tones generally lie in the mid-tone area. So I'm going to come add a little magenta in the mid-tones. And it's still kind of adding it in other areas that I want to, especially in my shadows, as you can see here. So let's add a little bit in the mid-tones. And what we want to do is come down to my shadows and counter that and pull away from magenta to kind of get my shadows back to a natural black. All right. Let's toggle that on and off. And we're getting pretty close. We're not all the way there yet, uh, but we're getting pretty close. My skin tone line has gotten closer. My skin tones has gotten closer to the skin tone line. So we almost there. The, the shot's starting to look a little bit more natural. Let's click this tab over here. Click this effects panel. And let's see where we started to where we at now. All right. We already looking better for sure. Click back to the color tab. Uh, now what I want to want you to do is... I want you to grab another color board, all right? And we're going to add a mask to his skin. So I want you to grab that skin, that mask, click this tab, click Add Color Mask. And once you do that, drag that, drag that over his skin tones. And as you can see, everything that it grabs, it grabs the skin tone and it's grabbing some other things as well. So what we want to do is we want to come down... Uh, here and just kind of clean clean them up a little bit click view mask you see everything it has highlighted uh, and we want to kind of come we want to come down to this HSL and just kind of clean the image up a little bit now it's going to take a little time to get used to using this but the more you do it the more you kind of understand how it works and what it affects all right there we go that's pretty good uh, all right. Okay. All right, so that's pretty good. So now uh, click view mask again to get it back to the natural look. Now what I want to do now that I have that uh, selected, so just the skin tone. So, so whatever I do to this color board, so we should come over to this tab and click this. So whatever I do to this color board, it should only affect the skin tones. Now I know I need a little bit magenta in the shots. I know the skin tones lay in the mid-tone mid area. So I'm going to come grab this circle here, the gray circle, which is the mid-tone circle. And I'm going to come to magenta, and I'm just going to drag a little bit of magenta up. We don't want to overdo it because it starts to look unnatural like that. So we literally just want to add just a little bit just to kind of make it a little bit more natural. Toggle that on and off. See the difference? All right, so next I want to actually come and grab my shadow circle. And I actually want to come down to my red and add a little bit of red in it. If when the reason I add red into the shadows, because you could think of adding red is like adding blood to the face. And it kind of brings blood back to the face and makes it look more natural. Give it a natural uh, reddish orange look. But don't overdo it because it'll look crazy like that. So just add a little bit, just enough to get that natural feel. Let's toggle. And as you can see, my skin tones are lining up on that line a lot better. All right, that's probably a little too much. All right, and now let's toggle that on and off. Starting to look a lot, lot better. Okay, so now I want to start adding the look. So come down here, add a curve. I want to add a color, uh, S curve to my image to kind of really make them pop out of that background. So what I want to do, I want to add a but, uh, circle down here towards the bottom, and I want to add a circle towards the top. And I want to pull down on this shadow area, all right, and then I want to pull up in the highlight area. And as you can see, as I do that, it really starts to make him pop up out of that background. And that's the goal. And you want to make sure you find the sweet spot, too. Um, on what's going to look the best. 
once you find a sweet spot, you can just kind of dial it in. And, and this is ultimately to to your taste. Like, there's no exact rule to this. It's just really what you want the image to look like. If you want to go a little bit more extreme, by all means, go for it. I think we're going to try that on this shot. And a little bit more back in the shadows. All right, let's toggle that on and off. See what it did to the image? Looks a lot more dramatic. All right. I actually kind of like this. It's like a low saturation look. Uh, let me crush my shadows just a little bit. I kind of like this actually a lot. We're going to go with the teal and orange look with kind of a green, a hint of green in the overall image once I finish up. So I had the green last. So what I want to do is actually add another color curve. All right. And now what I want to do is grab uh, the red curve. I want to drop a circle right in the middle. And the reason is because that's kind of where your skin tones lay. So what we're going to do is add a little uh, little teal in the shadows. And you do that by pulling to the right with uh, the red curve at the bottom. Pulling that to the right. And as you can see, it's starting to add teal into the shadows. But the skin tones are staying pretty steady. They're getting affected a little bit, so maybe I come add one here. Just kind of pull that back up a little bit. Just so it doesn't adjust it too much. All right, let's look at that. Oh, no. Yeah, there we go. So now let's also come to the highlights a little bit. And let's pull that down to the right. And then start to add a little bit of teal into the highlights. On oh, no. off. All right, images are actually starting to look really, really good. All right, so now I kind of dialed in uh, somewhat of a look. Uh, there's a couple more steps and we'll be done. I want to add another color wheels. I want to come to this master up here at the top. I'm going to grab the button, and I just want to pull it down to the green a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit of a different vibe. See, I like that a lot. And we don't want to overdo it. I always remember when you color grade, Slight adjustments are critical. You add slight adjustments to impact the overall image. All right. So now that image is starting to look pretty good. Uh, but we still want to continue to separate them. And I want my blacks uh, to become a little bit more true blacks. So what I want to do is come grab a hue and saturation curve. All right. And you want to go all the way down. Uh to the Luma versus Sat. And you want to kind of click the tab and uh, down here on the left side of the scope, add a button, and then you want to pull this side down. And the reason that is because this side to the left is your shadows, to your right is your highlights. So when I pull this down, you just look at the beard. It's kind of greenish right now. When I pull it down, it gets back to more of a, a black. Why is that? Because what I'm actually doing is pulling the saturation out of my shadows. Uh, now, I don't want to affect it too much, so I'm going to drag this tab over to my left a little bit more just so I'm not pulling too much green out because I kind of like that green look. And there we go. Now, let's toggle this on and off and see the difference. See the difference? Good. Uh, now, all the adjustments we made is kind of made his skin tones... Uh, a little bit less saturated. Uh, so what I want to actually do is come to this orange versus saturation and just kind of pull this up just a little bit. Not too much. Just slightly. All right. So now let's click that on and off. So I still want to create a little more separation. So what I want to do is I want to come down. I want to add another curve. And now I want to add a shape mask. Click the shape mask, and we want to put this right over his face, and go ahead and kind of add a wide shape mask, a big one, right over his face, and then feather it out all the way to the edges, a little bit past the edges, all right? That's because we don't want to see any hard shadows, because we're going to actually add a little vignette around him just to kind of help his face and his presence pop out the image a little bit more 
Uh, so now we got the mask added. What I want to do is come down to this tab here where it says mask and click outside for me. And what it's going to do affect the outside of the mask versus inside of the mask. So now what we need to do is come down and add a uh, circle right here in the middle of this curve, the luma curve, and let's pull it down. Now, as you can see, as I pull it down, it starts to add a vignette around them. All right. And I'm actually adjust a little bit more and bring it in just a little bit more. There we go. So now let's toggle that on and off. All right. Let's go back to this tab and click the effects tab and see what it, the before and after. That's starting to look really good. I still want a little more grit. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add some film grain. Film grain is your best friend when you're trying to create something that looks cinematic. Uh, so add a, fil a film grain to the clip. Um, I don't typically like the iMovie grain because it kind of adds like a sepia look on it. So uh, click this tab over here and come down to realistic grain. There we go. And just add how much you want to taste. I generally like to come to the 30 to 40% range. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. All right, you can see the grain that it's adding into the image. All right, fit. All right, so the image is starting to look really good. Um, there's a couple more things I like to do. It's kind of like my final touches, my kind of signature things that I do. Um, some people might say this is a little uh, crazy that I do this, but I actually like to add prism to my images, and I I usually pull it down to about two two percent. And uh, what it does, it just kind of gives it a different different feel, almost almost like a, a VHS look, but not quite. It, de it depends on how much you're using. kind of softens up the edges just a little bit for me. And make it look a little bit less uh, digital video-ish. So, I mean, I, I kind of like to add that on my shots. Uh, you should try it out. Uh, you might like it. You might not. But I definitely like it. So, um, I want to do one more thing. Let me actually add a little sharpener to it. Most people tell you not to do this, which I agree in most cases. Um, but just depending on your image and where you shot it and how it looks, it's really all up to you. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit on here. And that's. I think we're done. So check out this before and after. Before. After. And that's my quick color grading tutorial in Final Cut Pro. All right, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. I appreciate your time today. And always remember love God, love people, and stay creative.